No matter your background or education, no matter your looks or your smarts, no matter how successful you may be, all of us, to a number, struggle with insecurity. Even the rich and famous. Oh, we may work hard to hide it, even from ourselves, but it's there. We may be unaware of it, but our insecurities can control us far more than we realize. All of us have experienced hurts along the way of life, or we've made wrong conclusions about our worth based on lies we believe. Witness the great success of Brene Brown's thesis on vulnerability, which has struck a chord within so many of us. It's helped us to see the huge amount of energy we expend to pretend we're okay and we have it all together. Authenticity has become the new norm because now it's okay to embrace our humanity. But can I tell you something? Even that can be our weapon to defend against facing our insecurities. As long as we talk like we're being vulnerable, since that's what everyone else is doing, maybe we can avoid looking at our deepest fears or insecurities. Let me give you some examples. Think about the last time you stewed about a comment someone made about you and you had a hard time letting it go. Or what about the numerous times you worked until 10 p.m. to prove yourself to your boss? Or how about the time you blew up at your wife because she embarrassed you in front of your guests? Or how about the dismissive comment you made about a coworker when you realized she was getting rave reviews about her work? In psychology, we have a name for all of this behavior. We call it defending our ego. And I don't mean ego as in puffed up pride, but ego as in our sense of ourself and our worth. When we feel like our ego is being attacked, that's, that is our sense of worth or ability to feel good about ourselves, we'll actually act in ways to make ourselves feel better, even if that means putting down someone else to build ourselves up. Sound familiar? So what can we do about this? First of all, facing the reality of our insecurities is key. Be honest with yourself. Ask others about what they've observed about you and also ask God for insight. And then name your key insecurities. Are you fearful of rejection? Afraid that you're not good enough? Do you struggle with feelings of failure or being judged by others? Next, begin to notice the times you get triggered. This may take a bit of work, but spend some time tracking all the times you feel bad or you act reactively, you withdraw, or you can tell your back goes up. Remember, having insight about your triggers and the situations that cause them to rise up will become your roadmap to begin making healthy changes. Then, using your roadmap, begin to consider what's the underlying need that's not being met. Is it your need for love and acceptance or your need to feel competent and productive? Or is it your need for security? Think about it and pray about healthier ways to have those needs met. For me, a huge part of this means going to God with my fears and insecurities and allowing His love and His positive regard to me to fill the hurting places in my heart. It means that I need to regularly spend time with my Father, resting in who I am as His daughter, allowing the truth of scriptures to fill my mind. Now, it's one thing to have insight about this, but it's another thing to live it out in my life every day until I begin to practice, practice, practice and notice my triggers and practice better responses. I won't begin to experience a transformation of my mind and heart. My fragile ego will continue to rule. It's as I choose to live out of the truth of my infinite, infinite value, yet my broken humanity, that I can find freedom from my ego defenses. It also means I have to take steps with courage to get healing if I need it through counseling. I need to take responsibility for my own insecurities and triggers rather than projecting or blaming others for them. I need to have conversations with my loved ones to ask them for feedback on their observations of me, or I need to read books or listen to podcasts to help me understand my triggers and insecurities. And I need to be at risk beginning to open myself up to building healthy relationships with mature, grace-filled, truth-telling friends who are likewise committed to personal growth. I might need to get professional help if I'm struggling to make sense of my triggers or insecurities, or embark on recovery programs that will help me identify my patterns and why I do what I do. It also means that I commit to a lifelong journey of growth with a growing humility about my fragility as a human being, coupled with my choice to continually access the unbelievable grace and love of God to ground me in the incomparable power of the Holy Spirit to change me. And this is good news. When you feel like a failure or not good enough, 
You can stop trying to make yourself big enough or capable enough to carry the weight of the world because God never designed you to do it. Once you realize this, you are finally free to no longer try to be what only God can be.